Hey everybody, March 2nd, 2022, Wednesday. I cannot believe we're this far into the new year already. Hope you're having a great week so far and we're midway through points. So that should be the another fun thing to look at as the weekend comes closer. I am Mona Smith with Journey of Purpose Life Coaching and I just would like to welcome you. Thank you for being here today and um, appreciate your support. As I discussed uh, Monday, I believe, I'm sorry, my glasses are not cooperating here. Let me fix them. Anyway, as we started um, on Monday, I shared how we were gonna be discussing assertive, being assertive, what that means like. I had a request that we maybe talk about that and that probably came about, I believe, when we were talking about being empowered over the last couple weeks, that being assertive was kind of part of that or may help you um, gain that. So, as always, when I come up with a word, a specific topic that I wanna to introduce to you guys, I like to do a little bit of research and I, I go a little deeper than just going off what one person or one group said. And so as we look at the word assertive, the first thing that popped up was from Wikipedia and it describes assertive as having the quality of being self-assured and confident without being aggressive. Also, in the field of psychology and psychotherapy, it is a skill that can be learned and a mode of communication. And I have to interject here that as a professional life coach, I totally agree with that statement, with all these statements. When I do research, I pick things that I find to be true and close to my heart if I was describing it in my own words. And it totally is something that can be approved upon, it can be fine-tuned, it can go from zero to 10, it, you might be to five and move it to a 10, maybe you're too aggressive and too assertive, you need to tail it back, and maybe you're like a red carpet and you really need to up it. But anyway, I have to agree with that statement. It is something that can be learned and um, it comes easier with the more practice you have. And then the Mayo Clinic went on to say in a little fewer different words is that it describes it shows you respect yourself because you're willing to stand up for your interests and express your thoughts and feelings. And it also demonstrates that you're aware of others' rights and willingness to work on resolving conflict. And this is all done being assertive um, and a lot of the research when I was looking at it kind of maybe went into corporate or company, but honestly, assertiveness, if you improve it in one area of your life, it's gonna affect the whole area of your life. And I've kind of talked about this before. I use that as an example when someone comes to me and says, hey, I'm having communication problems with my spouse. Well, chances are, if they really dive deep and they usually do dive deep through coaching, they're having communication problems with their children, at work, maybe the book club, maybe the team, whatever. It just doesn't affect one area of your life. Being assertive earns other people's respect it helps find win-win solutions. It reduces anxiety and stress. It increases self-esteem. And the one article I was reading talked about it being a, makes you a better manager, but I'm saying it can make you, you fill in the blank. It can make you a better parent, a better manager, a better person, you know, a better husband, a better friend. It's not just a better management, right? And assertive people express themselves as another affirmation in a firm, direct, and positive way. And I saw one article said, be nice, be kind. You can do all of those things, but still be a nice person and a nice person to others. And people that are assertive tend to do well in life because they know their needs, their priorities, and they have the ability to respectfully communicate these. And that came from medicinenet.com. So as we go along, I'm curious today, in the box below on a scale of one to 10, one being, um, I'm kind of like a red carpet, right? Everything can just roll right over me. To 10, 
I'm assertive in a healthful way. I could teach a class on it. I can, ex you know, set that example. I bring this into my life. I'm curious, where do you see yourself at? On a scale of one to 10, put it in the box for me today. And as we end, there are five characteristics that rate high that people notice about someone being assertive. And those five characteristics are confidence in oneself. Hey, Anne, thank you for joining me. Confidence in oneself. It says themselves, but I'm saying it now like I'm talking to you. And I thought it was kind of funny, the example they used was, and this comes from peakcounselinggroup.org. So there's counseling and the one example, and I've known people like this. I had to giggle when this was the example, but you know, someone might say to you, what's your favorite food? Where do you want to go out? And I don't know, you pick, you choose, I don't care. Now, once in a while, I think we all have those days where we just don't care, we don't know. But when it's a common denominator, that whenever someone asks you that and you're just easy to give away your opinion, your view, go ahead and choose, that's where there might be some red flags that you need to work on your assertiveness. You need to start forming your own opinions, okay? Number two, respect others' opinions. And these might be a conglomerate of what we've already discussed, but I thought we'd end today as kind of a follow-up to what we've discussed. So. An assertive person will respect others' opinions. And that's because they're so confident and they know their priorities, where they stand, what they feel, that they don't need to insult or degrade someone else to feel better about their choices, their priorities. So that's another thing to look forward to. When an assertive person is kind, doesn't degrade, insult, another good sign. Number three, the ability to validate others' feelings. And that's kind of what we just talked about a little bit, but the example that they shared and I liked was, I, there are so many hot topics out there and I don't wanna get into a hot topic. Um, and I probably don't even have a very good example, but there's just comes a time when there's a conversation taking place between an assertive person and maybe, you know, we could call aggressive person, you know, where they come over too strong, um, depending on the situation. but. You know, if you make one statement that you're firm on, these are my beliefs, and someone else comes up, well, the, the assertive person isn't going to say, you're so stupid, why would you even say that? Why would you think that? They're just going to listen, encourage, and let them know that you're listening. Number four, good listener. And this is a lot about coaching. Active listening, eye contact, no interruptions, Reflection, you know, I'm gonna wait just a minute. I need to get a drink. My throat's kind of scratchy, hold on. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you for that. I usually have a drink right by me. Thank you, Margo, for watching. I don't usually get up like that, but I appreciate you letting me get a drink. I must be talking too much today. But anyway, the good listener, active listener, they talked about couples counseling where active listening, eye contact, no interruption, and reflecting and going back to make sure that they've understood what the other person is saying and that they're on the same page. If they're not showing those things, then their assertive behavior needs to be improved on. And being a life coach, those are some of our top skills that we work on to improve and we get better with the more we use. And last but not least, problem solving and compromise. And this is where the assertive person may say, I stand firm, this is what I believe, these are my priorities, this is what I want. However, I hear you, I see where you're coming from, I understand your view, and they come up with a compromise. Now compromise, usually no one quote unquote wins, but at least everybody's heard, they felt heard, it's in a positive environment, they understand, and they understand compromise. Sometimes everybody has to compromise. There's not a true whole winner. And 
I want you to understand that if you are learning to be more assertive, you may lose people who don't like the new you, and I've discussed this many times. When you make positive changes, set new boundaries, whatever it is, you may lose some. And I want you to know that's a hard feeling. It hurts our heart. It might hurt our mind, our soul, our tummy, wherever you feel that. No, it's okay to feel. Don't, you know, let it happen. Recognize it, but move forward because guess what's right around the corner? You're going to attract people that are positive, that love you being assertive, and that are positive environment that, you know, if there's the scales, you might lose some, but you're going to gain some. So always keep that in your mind and be on the horizon outlook, I'll say, because, um, even though you lose some, you always win some, and it's better to be around the positive, and maybe the ones you lose, it's better to not be around. So once again, I thank you again for joining me today, and I just want to give you a little insert, a little blurb about me. When people join me live, I like to just take a quick moment to reach out, say hi, and invite them into my group. I hope um, that explains why I do that. I've heard different pros and cons on that, but that's my con. I, my, that's my pro, I should say. I like to show respect and let people know I appreciate them being with me, and I don't go into a long spiel, but I listen to what other people say, and I try to make what works with me. It makes my heart sing. So until Friday, enjoy the journey, be empowered, live on purpose, and Friday, I'm going to share a story about a purple rubber band. So I hope you can join me on Friday at 2 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time live here on Facebook. Thank you. Love you guys. Bye-bye.